Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody, and welcome to a Monday edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com Monday update. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Hope everybody had a good trading day. Um, so before we start, again, if you are brand new to the channel, thank you very much for spending a couple of minutes uh, with us. Uh, all we ask is like, subscribe, share, uh, all that good stuff that can help out uh, the channel to grow, to kind of spread the word of technical analysis. So let's talk about where we are, right? So for the last two weeks, uh, the NASDAQ 100 uh, lost a little over 6%, right? Kind of a big deal. Um, they rebounded today about one, a little over 1%. So before everybody starts taking out um, the noisemakers and the party has, just understand we're still down 5% from two weeks ago. There is a silver lining to this, right? And we'll get to the silver lining uh, here in a second. No doubt. Uh, the Bulls uh, on paper today put together a pretty good uh, pretty good day, right? The Dow uh, rebounded 500 points. Uh, it's best day since June, um, which was great, which was absolutely great. The S&P was up 1.2% and the Nasdaq uh, rebounded back 1.1%, uh, 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 which was very, very good. Did every stock rebound? No, not every single stock rebounded. We'll get to that in a second. Again, obviously you guys know uh, which one I'm talking about because we traded every single day. And if you watch the update for pretty much the last seven years, we talk about that stock. Again, we'll get to that uh, in a second. Here's the most important part, right? Here is kind of where we, we start uh, where we start to th this evening's update and going into tomorrow's session. Number one, again, kind of a quick uh, history lesson. We lost the 50-day moving average, went to the 100, lost the 100, went to the 150-day moving average, lost the 150-day moving average, and we went all the way down to here, uh, 342, uh, the lows. Now, keep this in mind. This is roughly 25 points off the highs uh, oh, excuse me, off the highs just in the last couple of weeks, hence uh, hence the 6% decline. And today's rally, we rallied to the five-day moving average and got rejected. Well, now, why is that significant? Again, even if you don't know anything about technical analysis, uh, everybody has eyes, eyeballs, right? Everybody see this orange line, right, guys? Everybody see this orange line? You see what happens, what's happened in the last three weeks? Uh, every single time it hit the orange line, right? Hits the orange line, fades. 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 We just hit the orange line today and faded. What's the orange line? If you're joining us for the first time, the orange line is the five-day moving average. A lot of people uh, don't acknowledge it, uh, don't respect it. Hell, don't even know if it's there. Um, I've been using the five-day moving average for many, many years, and it represents to me the shortest, I mean, literally, the shortest uh, term internet, or excuse me, interval uh, of the stock market, who has control of the five-day, has control of the most short-term uh, imbalances. And that's a very good reason uh, what we call it because of all the craziness goes on in the market. But so far, every single time we've hit the five-day moving average, we got rejected. Even if you look at the opposite here, go to the opposite here on the way up. Every single time we hit the five-day moving average, we bounced. So there's there's a method to this madness here. So what happens, you know, what happens tomorrow if they can't reclaim today's channel, right? Well, we're gonna go lower, right? We're gonna go lower because again, it's not exactly a good thing what we're doing. Here's what the bulls need to do for tomorrow. Guys, write down this level on the queues. The queues need to reclaim 350.50, okay? 350 and a half uh, on the queues. That will reclaim the five-day moving average and break this very impressive streak of, keep, of rejections. Uh, this will also reclaim back the 150-day EMA and if that happens, yes, we could have um, we could have a multi-day, I don't want to use the word rally, but a multi-day potential for upward move back to this 353, 354 level that will correlate back to the 150-day uh, moving average and the 10-day moving average uh, that is crossing. So that's what the bulls need, right? Absolutely, that's what the bulls need. The bears need to get below this 346 level that was today's lows. And again, honestly, folks, I can't even 100% tell you that was today's lows. Why? If you're an active trader, you know what's been going on uh, for the last two days in the market. There has been wicks everywhere. When I'm talking about wicks, yeah, they're talking, they may talk about Halloween scary wicks. 
right? Look at the five. This is real. The, guys, this is what, usually this would be all fake prints. This was real. This is a chart on Tesla. Uh, it finally stopped wicking out. I guess that's the word I'm looking for a little bit after one o'clock. But this is what's been what was going on now for the last couple of days on any stock that's been trading with a, with a major average shoe range, NVIDIA, Tesla, Q, Spies, whatever it is, these weeks have been absolutely real. And I talked about it over the weekend update that how can you trust the price action, right? If you're getting these fake prints all over the place. And the problem with these fake prints are they're being demonstrated on the daily chart. So if I give you an example today, right? The high today on Tesla, okay, was not 212.41. We all know that. We watch Tesla every day. Did it get to 210, maybe 211? Maybe. The two, the, the stock did not go to 191. How do I know it didn't go in 191? Because we were short from 205 and we still have a runner. Believe me, I would have covered into this range. So there is absolutely a, a, a carnage, right, of Wick City everywhere. And the NASDAQ is finally aware of it. What, what's been going on for the last couple of days, apparently they've taken, there is a data feed issue, right? And that's why we've seen all these Wicks. So they basically, in layman's terms, took it from one server and put it towards another, okay? They're aware of the issue, and I'm hoping, okay, because at least when we saw Tesla now, uh, since one o'clock, it didn't have any wicks. I'm hoping this was the last of these crazy wicks, because again, guessing where a stock is going to pivot, trying to figure out if that was real, a, a real chart print or not, is not exactly what I want to do for a living, and I'm sure a lot of you guys feel exactly the same way. So hopefully this is behind this, hopefully... Uh, the NASDAQ fixed this issues, uh, and we can go on uh, trusting the data points, trusting the data, because if not, again, trust me, and I know for a damn well, nobody nobody, nobody covered uh, Tesla to 191 because it never got to 91. I think the, the, the low of the day was like 9460s, but because of these wicks, it's demonstrating on the daily chart now that the stock went to 191. So anybody who didn't trade today is looking like, wow, tomorrow, if it gets below 191, no, 191 is irrelevant. 191 is a WIC issue uh, that the NASDAQ is aware of and hopefully are going to fix. And hopefully the price action is going to be fixed ahead of tomorrow's session. Because again, it's, it's even tough uh, you know, going through charts. And the NVIDIA, for example, right? NVIDIA, for example, it never got to 22 today. Okay, it never did. Look at the WICs here on, on NVIDIA. Okay, I know for damn well and he didn't get for 22s because if it would have got rejected at 22s, we would have been selling this thing to the 10-day moving average, right? We would have been shorting this thing to supply. It never got there. So again, hopefully, you know, a lot of you guys, uh, you know, it's not just from one broker. It's every, bro pretty much every broker uh, is having this issue. And again, hopefully you guys did not get uh, affected by this, but more important, hopefully going forward, this problem is uh, going away. So going into tomorrow, let's look at the indexes really, really quickly. Uh, the Qs, again, need to get above uh, 350.50 for a stage potential one or two day push. The bears need to get below uh, 346. If you look at the SPYs, right? Let me look at the SPYs. Again, look at this wick, okay? I, I give you my word that the spies did not trade to 413 today, right? I, I, I give you my word. It never got down there. It's going to be 412. It never got down there, Right? But that's what we're showing here. So the bulls need to get above, you know, roughly need to get above this 417, 417, 30. You see this, this is the five day. It's kind of the same thing with the NASDAQ. You see how it keeps on getting rejected off the orange line, rejected, 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 right? So the bulls for them to have stage another potential day of rallying need to get above 417 and change uh, to see if we could stretch this out back to the 10 day moving average, which is roughly 421. Uh, after the close, uh, Apple is uh, doing some sort of um, some sort of presentation, something, some sort of uh, event. It's very ironic and very convenient. Uh, if you guys remember, the last two, three Apple events have been faded in the middle of the day. So what they did now was conveniently they're starting their event at five o'clock Pacific time. Why is that irrelevant? Well, because five o'clock Pacific time is eight o'clock. Eastern time. Why is eight o'clock ECM important? Because the ECNs close at eight o'clock. So if they're saying something stupid, right? They're saving themselves from getting hit after hours. And now they're just hoping that the futures are going to gap up, right? They're hoping the futures are going to gap up. So whatever they said on their presentation doesn't get affected. But very, very nicely played, Apple. You guys are tops. But again, that's what's going on here. Uh, they are reporting on Thursday, obviously, is going to be 
uh, a big, um, uh, obviously is going to be a big catalyst, especially for the NASDAQ 100. Uh, tomorrow we have, let me see what's going on tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow we got um, AMD. AMD is going to be the big one for tomorrow. We got AMD. We got Caterpillar before the open. Uh, nobody really other major than that. You have a bunch of Amgen is reporting tomorrow. And then Wednesday, you got Roku, Qualcomm, uh, Yum Brands, nothing really crazy there as well. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday is the biggie. We have Coinbase, you have Shopify, and you have Apple, Starbucks, uh, Moderna, but uh, Apple is definitely going to uh, set the stage uh, for Thursday session. Um, so how do we look at tomorrow's session? Um, I look at it as if we can reclaim the 350 and a half on the queues, I definitely like some charts that are setting up here. I'm trying to be very simplistic. I'm not trying to be very creative for tomorrow's session. Uh, Amazon, right? Amazon today first close above the 50-day moving average. Obviously, it's one of the ones that had good earnings. Um, if the market does rally tomorrow, I'm obviously going to watch Amazon. If it could confirm this channel here and confirm the 50-day moving average, it could make a push uh, into this 135 level. Uh, Netflix today woke up as well, right? It still needs to get above this channel here, but if it could, right? If it could start reclaiming back the top of this range, the top of the supply, it can actually rally back as well. Let's look on the other side, right? If you've been watching the video and watching the broadcast, we've been talking about two stocks, specifically two stocks for the next leg down. The first one was Tesla. Da, 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 da. That was the big trade of the day. Uh, as you can imagine, right? I had a whole bunch of pivots set up for the downside today. Only one pivot confirmed to the downside and only one pivot confirmed to the upside because again, when you have technical damage, you're not gonna get 35 stocks that are breaking out, right? Because you have 6% move in two weeks. So you're, you're, you have to really pick your spots. And to the downside, considering the NASDAQ was up uh, over 1%, Tesla did not rally. So let's talk about literally the only two pivots uh, that confirmed today. Uh, Amazon 130.07 is supply. It's also last Friday's high. It needs to build. Here was Amazon. It got above the 130 area. That was the supply right here, the 50-day 50, uh, 50 day EMA, and traded to the 50-day SMA all the way up to uh, all the way up to the 133 uh, level. This thing looks really, really good. Now the question is, and again, here's my point: that Amazon was Amazon's high today, 133. Or was Amazon's high today 133.40, right? Can I even trust this week? That's the major question. That's the problem we've been having. Uh, all traders have been having, especially in technology space. Again, is the today's high 33 or is today's high 33 and a half, right? Please, NASDAQ, do what you got to do, but fix this problem as soon as possible. But again, uh, app Amazon, if it does rally tomorrow, confirms a 50-day, uh, it should have another leg up. Uh, Tesla was definitely the big one of the day. Um, I still have a little bit of a runner overnight. Uh, 214.80 to the upside. Again, we always try to do a two-sided pivot. 214.80 to the upside. 204.88 to the downside. Can you can you guess which one confirmed? So Tesla confirmed uh, 204. Uh, confirmed 204.88, and this was just an absolute destruction. Absolutely got destroyed. Uh, it traded all the way down to uh, 194 and change. I believe that is a uh, little low, I'm guessing here. Uh, if you guys remember last week, they were coming for the 185, uh, 190 puts. Uh, today, they were coming aggressively right off the open for the 200 puts and the 190, 190, 250 weeklies. And they were coming for the 1117 expiration for the 180 puts. Guys, watch Tesla tomorrow. If it starts losing today's lows, uh, we could get another uh, move up as well. And everything else didn't confirm. You know, Coinbase uh, was strong today. Uh, NVIDIA was strong today. AMAT was strong today. Nothing confirmed today. Nothing literally else confirmed to me uh, today. Again, here's finally the reason why, why the NASDAQ uh, is aware of the issue. But guys, watch the video, right? And again, I'm not saying it's going to happen tomorrow. Hell, it might not even happen at all. But guys, watch the video. It's the same kind of setup as Tesla. It's been building now below multiple, multiple days of supplies. Does it have its days that it goes up five, six, seven points? Of course, because it's a $400 stock. But keep this in mind. So does Tesla, right? Tesla had those up days as well until it started losing major support. And when it started losing major support, look exactly what happened. So I'm definitely watching the video for the next couple of days. Does it mean the video has to confirm tomorrow? Of course not. You know, we could have a rally tomorrow and the video could go up 10. 
But the point is, again, like we say every single day, guys, make sure you are prepared on both sides so there's no accidents, there are no surprises, and you're not the victim, right? You're not the victim, okay? You are uh, you are the person, you're the predator, right? You don't, you know, don't be the victim, be the predator. You're the predator of this market. Trade because you get value, okay? Don't trade because the market's open, and that will give you a really good uh, step on uh, the other traders, okay? So guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. Hopefully this data issue uh, is fixed, and with God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.